Hello, and welcome to CodePro, where we learn how to code, make apps, and share technology. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning about storyboard references. Essentially, how to take one massive storyboard with a bunch of view controllers and chop it up into individual storyboards with smaller amounts of view controllers. Now, this has huge benefits if you're working on a large team with multiple developers, where you can work on one storyboard while other developers can work on different storyboards and you have less of a chance of stepping on each other's toes. So, all right, enough chit chat, let's begin. As an iOS developer, chances are you've probably walked into a project and saw something like this. Maybe not all these bright colors, but probably one giant storyboard with like 20 or 30 view controllers. And you're like, okay, what do I do with this? This is something we want to avoid. And we're gonna learn how to break these up into different storyboards and load them dynamically when we need them. Go into Xcode and then create a single view application. And we're going to make an app that looks kind of like YouTube. It's gonna be a tabbed application. Let's just say it has a home section, a trending section, and a subscription section. Um, and we're not gonna do the activity and library tabs for now. So how would we go about doing something like that from here uh, without using storyboard references? Well, the traditional approach would be, you know, creating a tab bar controller, and adding in different view controllers that represent the tabs. So let's say for example here, um, on my tab bar controller and I hold down the control key, click and drag, I can create uh, view controllers that create additional tabs. And this is usually the flow that most uh, tabs interfaces tend to take. And you can see that as we continue to add view controllers, uh, this can start to get out of control pretty fast. Now let's just say I wanted from uh, one of these tabs to have a way to get into a detailed view controller. And let's just say that when you click on one tab, um, it takes you to this view controller. This view controller has a button and it has a gateway to get to, let's just say another view controller, detailed view controller. And this can get pretty haywire pretty quick. Um, but what if we had a way to just take one tab could represent a storyboard, this tab could represent a storyboard, and so could this one. It's effectively breaking up all of these into their individual components. And that's where storyboard references come in. So go over to the file explorer here, and we're gonna create a couple of new files. Um, we're going to create new storyboards. And we'll start off with the first one, and we're just gonna call this home. We'll go ahead and create another one. And let's just go ahead and call this one trending. And we're gonna create one more. And we'll call this one subscriptions. Once we have all three of those in place, let's go back to the main storyboard here. And we're just gonna delete all of this stuff that we, uh, that we made for their tabbed interfaces so far. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, and get rid of, uh, we'll keep this one. Actually, no, we'll get rid of this one too. Effectively, if leaving just a tab controller for the right now. Now let's go into the home storyboard. And what does YouTube iOS app typically have for its uh, tabs, right? Home has the home feed uh, videos, and then if you select a video, you go into play that video or the, the detail video view controller, if you want to call it. So we're going to emulate something like that. Uh, go into your object library here and drag a view controller onto your home storyboard and grab a second view controller and also drag that onto the home storyboard as well. And for the first one, let's go ahead and select it. Go to the attributes inspector and set this one as the initial view controller. What this means is when you use a storyboard reference and load this storyboard, this view controller is gonna be the first one that gets loaded into memory. Um, and so from here, we need, okay, how, how do we wanna get from our home feed to our detailed video view controller, for, for, for example? So we can do that simply by just creating a button and dragging that onto our uh, home feed view controller and we can select that button, hold down the control key, click and drag, and we'll just go ahead and create a uh, show segue. 
And what we'll do next is just change the colors of their views so we can kind of visually differentiate them. So select the first view controller and go up here. And if you don't have this menu available, you can close it or expand it with this little option button down here. And select the view. And with the view selected, go to the attributes inspector. And let's just change its background color to red. And we'll go into this second detail one here. And let's just change it to a different color as well. I'll change mine to this blue color here. One other change let's make is select the button that you added. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add some constraints to it. So I'm currently running Xcode 9. Um, this has uh, updated some of the ways it does constraints compared to uh, Xcode 8. So uh, I'm going to add some, um, actually, I'm going to add a width and a height. I'm going to select this here and a horizontal center and a vertical center. So we can keep this button right in the middle. And I'm going to change the title of the button in the attributes inspector. And we're just going to call this uh, home feed. And let me make sure that we can see that. So yep, you can see that. And I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to take this view controller. And because I want an easy way to get into this view controller and back, I'm going to embed it in a navigation controller. Uh, and so if you go to the editor, embed in, and then in a navigation controller, that'll automatically set up that, set that up for you. And one thing to remember here is when you do something like this, your navigation controller needs to be the initial view controller. It will be the starting point. It will load the view controller that is the starting point for the navigation controller. And then from here, if we press the home feed, we have the back button here on our detail view controller to get back to the home feed and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, this is a really dumbed down version of our little YouTube mock app here. But just to illustrate this point, let's also go to the trending storyboard and do something very similar. So let's grab a view controller and we'll drag it onto the storyboard. And we'll grab another one from over here and for a detail view. And for this view controller, I'm going to select it, go to the view, and I'm going to change its color to something different that we have not used. I'll try this uh, purple magenta color. Then for the other corresponding view controller in here, I'm also going to select its view. And I'm going to change its color to something different. I'm going to try this uh, yellowish or greenish color here. And I'm also going to embed this first one in a navigation controller. So um, go to the editor and select uh, the embed in navigation controller. And that'll set that up for us right there. And same idea, I'm going to add another button and drag it onto our view controller here. And for the title of this button, I'm going to change mine to trending. And this would represent the trending section on our YouTube app. So we'll just call this trending. And uh, let's see here, I want to create the segue uh, to get to the detailed view. So I'll hold down the control key click and drag on this button over to this view controller. And I'm just going to do an action segue show. And we'll inherit the uh, navigation bar here in the detail view controller. And uh, that sets this one up. Let's and let's make sure that we make our navigation controller the initial view controller. So if that's not selected, go ahead and make sure you select that. And uh, let's just knock out the subscriptions one real fast. So with the subscription storyboard selected, we'll go ahead and add a view controller into here. And uh, I'm going to select this view controller. I'm going to change its color to something else. And I'm not going to add a detail view controller on this one just because you get the idea. Um, it, it's, it's pretty much the same thing across the board here. So I think I used these colors already. Let me just select something, something different. I'll do a yellowish, bright, brighter, or orange. How about that? kind of orange. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to embed this in a navigation controller, but I'm not going to do a detail view controller. So just do the same thing, uh, embed in navigation controller. And uh, I'm just going to put a label on this one instead of a button. So we'll go here and add a label and space that out in the center and uh, zoom back in. And I'm just going to call this 
subscriptions and give it enough space. And I'm just going to go ahead and center it with a width and height constraint like we did before. So we'll go here, width and height, and then here, horizontally and container and vertically. So now we are all set up for our individual storyboards. Now let's actually hook up the references that load each one of these when we select different tabs. Now go back to the main storyboard. And from here, we just have our tab controller, tab bar controller. And go back down to the object library and we're going to look for storyboard reference. And we're gonna drag three of these onto our main storyboard. And once we've done that, we're going to go to the tab controller here and we're going to hold down the control key, click and drag, and drag over to one of these references. And in this case, I'm going to select the relationship segue being view controllers. And that sets up the tab structure that we had before. However, in this instance, we are using a reference to get to that storyboard that we've defined and load the view controllers in it. So for the second storyboard reference, do the same thing. Hold down the control key, click and drag. And we'll release that on here. Relationship segue view controllers. And same thing for our third tab. Hold down the control key, click and drag, view controller segue. And we're gonna go over to our reference. And if you have your reference selected, you can see up here in the attributes inspector that it has a storyboard that it tries to load. And so what we wanna do is set the storyboard that corresponds to the tab. So for our first tab, since we're emulating a YouTube app, we want to use the home storyboard. And for our second tab, which is gonna emulate the uh, trending uh, tab, we're gonna select trending. And for the final tab for us, uh, which is the middle tab for the real YouTube app, uh, we're gonna select subscriptions. The next thing we wanna do is change the titles of these tab bars, uh, or tab bar items. So to do that when using storyboard references, um, you have to actually change it on the root view controller uh, inside each individual storyboard. So what we're gonna do is go to our home storyboard to start. We're gonna select the root view controller, which is our navigation controller. We're gonna look for a tab bar item and drag that over onto the root controller there. And when we select that item, uh, we can go into the attribute inspector up here and then we can change the title. Now for home, I'm just gonna call it home and uh, that's all I'm gonna put for here. And you'll see that that, that that name updates right here. And because that storyboard reference has a link, the tab bar controller's tab bar item will basically link back up to the parent tab bar controller that had referenced this link. So let's go and do the same thing on the trending and on the subscriptions. So we'll go to the trending storyboard, grab that tab bar item and drag it onto the root select it. I'm going to change the title to uh, trending. And finally, we'll do that same thing for subscriptions. And oops, it looks like I forgot to set this as the initial view controller. We'd get a compilation error immediately uh, using references here. So let's make sure that we have that set. So select that navigation controller, go over here to the attribute inspector, is initial view controller, and now we're good. And let's go back here and grab that tab bar item drag it onto the navigation controller and we'll just go ahead and change that to subscriptions and let's go back into the main storyboard here and double check and it looks like we're all set so let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see what happens so simulators up I'm starting off on my home tab here if I hit the home feed button I go into the detail view if I go back I can go back to the home feed um, I can switch tabs to trending. Uh, looks like uh, I can go into the detail view right there. I can go back. I can go into subscriptions. And we didn't add anything there. So, And I can also go into uh, the detail view here, go back into the home tab, pop back over to the trending tab, and it still remembers where I left off. So this is really powerful. Um, we can break up our storyboards and load them just like this and seg segregate everything out 
um, into nice modularized components that corresponds to maybe a particular feature in your app, such as home, such as trending, subscriptions, etc. So as you just saw, storyboard references are pretty easy to use in your application, and they help quite a bit. So if you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and smash that like button, and consider subscribing to CodePro to help support this channel for future tutorials. And make sure you follow CodePro on social media, and let me know in the comments section down below, what do you prefer to use in your application? Do you prefer storyboards? Do you prefer nibs? Or do you like to do all your user interface programmatically? So thank you so much guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.